neverquitmath.com. Today we're dealing with solving for X. Dealing with addition or subtraction. I put plus or minus, but I mean addition or subtraction. Just saving space. All right, there's two steps to keep in mind or two main things just to keep in your head. All right, to solve for X or any variable. Remember, a variable is just a letter when you're dealing with math. So it might be X, might be Y, might be B, whatever, right? So to solve for X or any variable, you must get rid of all the numbers on the same side as X, okay? Two, use the opposite operation to get rid of the number. Alright? That may sound crazy, but once we do the examples, memorizing these rules after we do the examples, it's gonna make it real simple for you. Okay? So if we have something like x plus 5 right here, and they say is equal to 12, normally we can guess that in our head and we can say, oh, that's 7, right? But there's steps to follow to this, and it's important because when we get to using bigger numbers, you're gonna see how easy it is when you follow the steps. So the thing is, if you have a positive 5 here, we want to get rid of this positive 5 to solve for x. And how do we get rid of it? Since it's plus, we use the opposite operation. We subtract 5. And we subtract 5 here. What you do on one side of the equal sign, you always do to the other. Why? Because you keep them equal. Get it? So 5 minus 5 is going to be 0. So then you got x plus 0 is equal to 12 minus 5, which is equal to 7. So in other words, x is equal to 7. Make sense? Let's try it with something different. If we got x uh, minus 32 is equal to 128. Now, a number like this we might not be able to do directly in our head, so that's why the steps are important. We have a minus 32 here, so we want to do the opposite operation. We want to add 32. You add 32 here, and you have to add 32 on the other side. Why? So that they could remain equal. If I over here had $20 and you had $20 and then I added four here and I added four here, we still have the same amount of money. That's why when you add something to one side, you gotta add it to the other side to keep them equal. All right, just a little side note. But let's get to the problem again. So we're adding 32 on both sides, 32, negative 32 and positive 32 as you know, come out to zero. They nullify each other. So we got x plus zero, right? Eight plus two is 10. Put the one up there. That's two plus one is three, and three plus three is six. Bring down the one, you got 160. So now you have x is equal to 160, all right? Once again, see the steps, right? So let's try another problem. Let's say um, x plus 98 is equal to 172. So what we're gonna do, this is added to x, right? So we want to subtract it. Look at how it's connected to x. Once you see how it's connected to x, you do the opposite operation and that's how you get rid of it. 98 minus 98 is just going to give you zero, so that cancels out. So another way we can do this, instead of going to the steps of writing zero and you don't want to do that, you can just understand that this cancels out and bring down your x. It's the same thing as if we did equals to zero and then we did the other step. Got it? Put our equal sign down, and now we just do our subtraction. So, 2 minus 8 can't happen, so we borrow 1, put the 6 here, 12 minus 8 is 4. 16 minus 9 is 7, x equals to 74. That's our solution, all right? Let's do one more. x um, minus 231 is equal to 456, right? So this is subtracted from x, we gotta do the opposite operation. So you add 231 here, and you know these, when they add together, they come out equal to zero, just like the previous problem, so we can just cross out and bring down our x. Then, what you do on one side, you have to do on the other to keep them equal. So then now that since we added, six plus one is seven, five plus three is eight, four plus two is six, x is equal to 687, all right? So that's the basics of doing that one. Continue, practice problems, look at the steps, you can do it. Neverquitmath.com. Let's go.